Hey, what's up, YouTube? Today we're going to install Ubuntu, which is a Linux-based operating system. And you can put this on any laptop, a Chromebook, whatever you want. It's all open source and free. And the reason we want to do this is to have an emulation station bootable on our computer. Uh, you're not going to be able to do that with a Windows-based PC. However, you can, like what I'm doing here, is I'm going to make a computer that can boot not only to this operating system, but it can also boot into Windows. So I can run both different types of operating systems. And this is really good. The reason why you might want to do this is you're going to be running off of a computer. So in this video, I'm putting it on an i5, my, my secondary laptop that has a Radeon graphics card in it. So it's going to run like the main and the PlayStation, GameCube, N64. It's going to emulate all that stuff flawlessly. So that's why you want, might want to do it. And again, it's all free, open source. So uh, here you go. The first thing to do is download the file. Uh, it's a couple gigabytes. You're going to need a um, flash drive, a USB flash drive. So go ahead and download this file, and then they even have installation instructions here. I'm going to show you how to do it on a USB, because not everyone has a CD-ROM drive nowadays, <clears throat> but it, you should have a little dongle like this. And then you want to download the program Rufus 2.11, and uh, once I have that all done, you should have it in a directory like I have here. The ISO is uh, 1.4 gigs, I'm sorry, so it's not even that big. You can probably install this on a 4 gigabyte, 8 gigabyte, 16 gigabyte uh, SD. And then you want to go ahead and get Rufus run as administrator. Oh, I already have it running, so it should look something like this. Uh, I have a 32 gigabyte um, flash drive, and just leave everything by default. All you need to do is create a bootable disk using, and then change this to an ISO, and then click on this, and then go ahead and find your image, and then go ahead and click the start, and then saying, oh, are you sure you want to do this? Um, go ahead and do what they recommend. It's also going to tell you that, you know, hey, we're going to format this, this SD or flash drive. So anything on here is moving. Make sure you're okay with that. Said so we might destroy what's on there. That's fine. And then right now, it's just going to go ahead and create your bootable uh, uh, operating system. And this is the same way if anybody's ever installed Windows before um, and you get the image online. You know, it's the same thing. You need to have the device be able to boot off of something. And so you're creating a bootable disk. And uh, once you have this, you're going to insert into your computer, and we're just going to do a standard installation of this operating system. So I have my uh, USB that now has the bootable operating system on it. I'm just going to go ahead and put it in my computer. Turn on your computer, and here you want to either hit F12 or F10 once your computer boots up, and that's going to prompt it to change the boot setup, or F2. And uh, there it is. I have my ADATA USB. Click that. And now it just boots right up off of the USB. And you're just going to follow the installation prompt from here. You have the option to install it alongside of your current operating system or to let this operating system be your main operating system for this device, uh, no matter what it is. And uh, just follow the install. It's that easy, and you'll be all set up. It should say, should become a startup screen. And go ahead and uh, you want to be able to connect to your Wi Fi and download and install while installing. Ubuntu, and then uh, allocate some disk space. You have a couple options here. I'm not going to get into this. This is up to you how much of your hard drive you want to use for this. But like if you're using a raised image, you're going to want like 100 gigs for, for, for um, ROMs, for example. So I would just put as much space as you want for ROMs. And then uh, you can slide this bar for how much you want on, on which hard drive. Go ahead and enter your location. Go ahead and give your language. Type in a password. You have to type in a password. And remember this password because you're going to be asked it later in the install. And then uh, that's it. You should be installed and then uh, on the home screen. Once you're in the home screen, we're going to open up a terminal. So right now I have uh, opened up a terminal. You can either search for it here in search your computer type terminal or it's control alt T. And once I open the terminal, the first command is to upgrade the existing APT packages. All I did was I copied this command into the command line. It asked me for my password and it's the same password you set when you installed the, um, the operating system. All right, so just finished. That took about 15 minutes. Now we're going to do the sudo install. Okay, so this second command messed up on. Let's go ahead and get the retro price script. Okay, that was just fast. So now, what are, oh, there. So I already typed it in, so I just did dub up since I already did it. There we go. 
but that'll take you a little longer to, to type in next time. CD retro pie. Set. Now in setup sudo. All right, so we uh, did the basic install. Here I am on 4.1.10, updated four days ago. Let's just go ahead and reboot really quick now that we have all our packages installed. Well, we definitely need to get ROMs in there, so let's go ahead and start that process. It's a lot of stuff. Maybe we should do some, let's just do Final Burn Alpha. Super Nintendo. Probably do PlayStation, PlayStation, Super Nintendo, and N64. So not bad. I'm using a USB 3.0, but I only have a USB 2.0 port on this laptop, but it's still going at 35 megabytes per second, not bad. Let that transfer over. Now when you boot up after you've installed your Pi, you should have a Pi here, and you can actually just drag it over here to create a shortcut. And here we go. And it should just boot right up. All right, so we now have transferred over some games. I plugged in my Xbox 360 controllers. Oh, I did want to show it in 64 game. So this game used to be super laggy. You can see it on my, when I tested the N64 games. And, uh... So let's install, I'm gonna install the X-Pad really quick and then install Final Burn Alpha 2012 so that works as well. All right, peeps, we got, um, we got uh, Final Burn Alpha 2012 and we installed the Xbox controllers. Um, go ahead and exit. I'm going to try do my controller again because um, it was not accepting the, um, especially if I'm going to play PlayStation games. But. So Crash Bandicoot seemed to lag a little bit. Let's give that a shot. This is playing perfectly.
Keep it together. Keep it together. Okay, there's a the front door. Catching air. The rumble pack on here works flawlessly, by the way. Uh, almost got it. I think the moral of the story here is this is gonna, I mean, this is an i5 processor with a uh, Radeon 7670 in it. I mean, it'll pretty much play anything. I'm sure you can also put GameCube on here, you know, any, any higher system that you want. Oh, there it is. Dang, I guess I can't just freeze my way to victory here. Man, the controls on here is pretty sensitive. Much different than Grand Prix. So yeah, back on the Raspberry Pi 3, a lot of these graphics were messed up like it would uh, shop over here. By the way, these are my shitty computer speakers. If I plug in uh, some uh, external speakers, it should sound a lot better. What? running great. Portable player. Let's grind. Oh, there we go. So there you have it. I now have it on my laptop. If I ever want to play, I just click over here to our Pi and it should load up my emulation station. And I have my Super Nintendo, Final Burn Alpha, Nintendo 64. Uh, you can add ROMs really easily. It's connected to the Wi-Fi. You can add experimental packages. You could probably add uh, Kodi, anything else you want. So uh, you get all the capabilities of the Raspberry Pi and the emulation station. You could probably even uh, install a track mode and get that working if you'd like. So you get all those features and you can run them on your laptop. So um, this is good for anybody who doesn't who wants to play some bigger emulators that uh, require a faster system. It's also good for those that don't want to buy a Raspberry Pi but want to use, use this platform. So it's pretty cool. If you're interested, uh, here it is. By the way, if you want to shut down, you can just uh, search here for shutdown. There's a shutdown application. I added it to my menu here, and then uh, shutdown. Running great. If you could please like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. If you're interested in doing this, I'm going to leave some links in the description below. And we'll see you guys next time.